Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and I did want to bring this stuff to your attention because the hotfix actually hit some really important pieces. Um, biggest things that I can tell you guys are kind of this little list here. Basically, if you've seen people duping the treasure object to speed it along, shouldn't be able to do that anymore. Uh, King's Fall, there were some issues with the DPS phase for Golgoroth. Also, a very bad audio issue seems to have been fixed. Omniocules having proper damage resistance in PvP seems to be correct. Also, the new exotic for Titans, this guy, uh, which I got the exotic yesterday, has actually been activated again, so you can mess around with it. So I will be doing a video on that once I figure out how it is. Uh, the Quicksilver Storm also seems to be working again. That's the Lightfall Auto Rifle. It's actually pretty cool. I will try and do a video once I get a little more time with that one. It was just turned off for a bit. But for an auto rifle, it's not bad with the little mini rockets and the possible grenades. Not a big blast radius on the grenades, but still not, not bad damage. Heavy grenade launchers are working again. So they're like supposed to be getting a 10% bonus damage from last season should be working. Not the 250 or whatever ridiculous percent they had before. So heavy grenade launchers should be active again. Combination blow was like staggering bosses for some reason. So that seems to be fixed. I saw literally a video about this in Lightblade. So that seems to be an issue. Probably the biggest one of all. Arc 3.0 for Titans and Warlocks now will basically give you the benefits of your resilience stat. So you're going to have incoming flinch reduction and damage mitigation. Basically, Arc 3.0 for Titans and Warlocks is fixed. The resilience is there, should be completely solid again. I haven't done a test on that one, but from what I saw on Twitter, people are saying it should be good to go. Power and Progression, Master Catch Crash, that was not giving you a pinnacle. It should do that now. And then... Um, other than that, as I said, the audio, very loud audio for Golgoroth was an issue, um, and that pretty much covers it. So that's basically it for the patch. Um, quick list of things, but lots of big things in there, especially Arc 3.0 for two of the classes is working again. So that will be nice to go experiment with. Look for from look for more from me on Arc 3.0 now that I can mess around with it and not die. So now let's go talk about the TWAB, a couple highlights in there as well. All right, so the TWAB for September 1st, it's weird to be two thirds of the way through the year, by the way. Um, main thing, King's Fall Raid Race happened. If you haven't done King's Fall yet, it's still one of my favorite raids and it holds up. They did a nice little tweak to some of the mechanics. Overall, still a very fun raid, very fun to teach, very fun to experience. Still one of my favorites, definitely in my top three for a reason and it was nice to see it. Um, there's some weird stuff with the numbers I'll go over in there, but yeah, there was one encounter that broke nearly everybody. We got through War Priest, which is the encounter, but I'll explain that a little bit later. Crucible matchmaking check-in. Basically, this is kind of a run-through of how Crucible loose SBMM kind of has been going. Week one, day one, it was actually broken. They confirmed the patch actually put default matchmaking in there, which is like worse than normal. Default matchmaking is like, 12 people get in a queue, they're matched together because they're the next 12 people. That's pretty much it after about 10 seconds. So that is why most people were like, this feels awful. And then about two days, then a day later, it was like, oh, this seems better. So that's been there. Now, granted, it's not perfect. One of the big things I've seen on Twitter is a lot of quitters not being like backfilled into a match. So if you're five to six, somebody's not coming into the match to help balance it out. You just stay five to six for the rest of the match. That's not great. They do kind of mention that as being a thing, quitter penalties and stuff like that. But yeah, default matchmaking, it's just awful. So we, we never want to see that. Now, they do say the stats from week one, the population, they say, went up. But you've given the game away for free for a week on multiple platforms. Everyone could play the campaigns, which would probably have people try out PvP as well. Lightfall pre-orders happened at the same time, so you have an influx of players there. So they're saying it was like 11% of an increase over Season of the Haunted. But with all those factors in there, I don't believe that to be a fairly reasonable stat. If you go six weeks from like week six of Season of the Haunted versus week six of Season of the Plunder, then we'll see where we are. But like right now with all the stuff they just did in that first week after the Lightfall reveal, I don't know if I trust that stat. And I again, some of this came from Twitter. Just the idea like there's a lot going on in the first week of Plunder to bump up numbers a little bit. Not everybody jumps into PvP. The campaigns are free, but PvP is like always free. Control is. So again... Probably bumped up for multiple reasons. Six weeks from now, I would be very curious to see where it stands. Uh, matchmaking times, they are saying for the highest and the lowest skill bands, basically those on the extreme ends of the bell curve. Um, for high population times, they're around 90 seconds. I'm like, you know, 90 seconds instead of 60 seconds, but you know, you get a decent match, should be okay. Some of them, like low population, seeing 200 seconds. 
for the lowest skill, seeing them to 240 seconds. I mean, come on, we're talking about four minutes now just to get one match. That sounds long, but for the lowest skill, you should still get a match. So I know they're working on matchmaking times to be better, but they are trying to not like make turn in, in too many of the dials too quickly. But I know matchmaking times, those numbers are something they don't want to see, especially from like the vocal minority, which is going to be the high skilled players who want good matches. They don't want to wait 10 minutes for one because that's literally one of the things they want to avoid. Um, skill differences. This is written weird, I will say, but it does sound like from, I think the way it reads is that their skill base, um, skill seems to be a better window of people, I think, but the way I, but the way it reads at one point, it's like, now we see a significant number of games with a high average of 600 skill and regularly as low as negative 500 with a few games going as low as negative 900. So I'm like, I don't know if it's just like the average skill in certain games are like where they're supposed to be. It's weirdly written to me. So if you read through that section and it makes sense to you, cool. That one I didn't get too much out of just because it's confusing. Outcomes, they said Mercy games are down 4%. Not as much as they'd hoped, but they're shrinking it a little bit. Games where the score threshold has been met uh, remain steady, but games that go to time rose by 4%. Uh, they said if games continue to go to the time limit, like if the time limit games rise consistently, they will look at, you know, the score goal and possibly lower it. They don't want you to hit the timer every time. Um, they want to give you the option. Some maps are different than others to give it kind of a reasonable number. But if like 10 minutes is too long, maybe it's got to be nine minutes. Maybe that's what it becomes. So you don't always hit the timer or something, whatever. Um, as for skill, they did say games where the best player had 30 more kills than the worst player went from... 10% of games down to 2% of games. That's actually huge. I mean, you're talking about a basically, you know, five times less games where that happens. That's actually really big because that means that person who's in the match, who is the worst player, somebody is going to be that player, is not getting stomped on as badly as often, which is a good thing. You can lose by like 20, but if you see somebody you have like eight and somebody has like 57, that sucks. Those two people probably don't need to be in the same match, and if they can avoid those, that's hopefully what they're just going for. It's just like, if you have a scale of 1 to 10, and a 10 is not matching against, it should not be in a match with a 1, and vice versa. Because those two in the same match, one's going to get crapped on, one's going to have way too, you know, one's just going to do the crapping. So, uh, games where the best player had only 10 to 19 more kills than the worst player went from 35% to 55%. So 20% more, that range from highest to lowest was actually tighter. So you are going to see hopefully more competitive games. Now the issue, they say the quitting has gone up by about 4%, which again, Twitter would make you think it's up by like 400% instead of 4%. Um, but there are issues with that backfilling, it seems. So that may be something that they're working on. Because the issue is like if you do skill match a lobby somehow, then somebody leaves, it's going to throw off the skill if you... You know, it's going to be hard to find the right person to put back in there. Maybe it's not trying to do that or it's struggling. So there are issues they're working on with that. Um, points they're working on in the future. Poor connections, depending on, you know, your matchmaking pool and stuff. And also quitting early. They are working on adding quitter protection. And again, everybody's going to have to, like, get up and go do something else real quick. Because something happened and leave your crucible match. It's not the end of the world. It's not like you're going to get banned. But if somebody goes in, oh, I don't like this match. Oh, I don't like this map. Oh, I don't like... Now, granted, map voting would be great, but still, the idea would be like, if you're abusing it, it may come back to bite you later on, but that's something they'll communicate later on. Not a big deal. Uh, for Season of the Plunder, Ido is very cool. It's Mithrax's daughter. So she's like kind of intrigued to go with us on all of her adventures and learn everything she can. Stuff with Spider going on this season seems a bit sketchy. He seems like he's going to backstab us at some point or do something bad. Um, but yeah, take care of Ido, all good things there. And then also for the expeditions, the Cosmodrome is open. So now you can go to the Europa, uh, expedition or the Cosmodrome ex expedition. I like the Cosmodrome more just cause it's faster. So that's just me. Um, King's Fall, Saltagreppo, Cruz, Kairos, Vile Fate, Moople, and Quaz. Three raid challenges in a row is kind of bonkers. Um, shout out to those guys. That's just straight up skill, talent, and practice. So that's awesome. This is what I was talking about. 440, 548 hour players entered the normal raid. A third of that finished totems. Totems were already a, a, a check at contest mode. That's not surprising. Now, the one that they're forgetting between these two is War Priest, which is the giant wall. And you'll notice if you go Golgoroth, Daughters, and Oryx, that's damn near the same number. Like, 
52,000, 49,000, 49,000. The fact that you lost like 500 people between Daughters and Oryx means if you got one, you got the other, and Golgoroth wasn't that much different. The, this is a massive drop because you lost a, th like, you were down to a third of the people who started cleared totems, and then I'm guessing another third probably did not make it through War Priest. But if you made it through War Priest, I heard most people who were like, you know, dedicated for the time, were able to go to the finish line. So I'm guessing it's like 158k, War Priest is probably like 58k, and then it just drops from there. So that's my hunch. I could be wrong, but War Priest was, uh, we barely got through it, and it was honestly so much about heavy ammo coordination. We figured out a plan that worked, and then we came down to having heavy ammo and DPS, which we finally did put together. But yeah, it was, um, <laughs> War Priest was the big wall. Very fun raid, though. Hopefully we'll be running that a lot more in the future. Still very fun, but you shout out to um, Saltagreppo and their team for Clan Elysium. They do a full interview with him, so if you want to read it, check it out. Very cool. Also, the Bungie Foundation is teaming up with Team Rubicon for National Preparedness Month. So Team Rubicon has their volunteers known as Gray Shirts. They have about 150,000 of them. So Bungie kicked off by donating 150k. If you want to donate $50 to help Team Rubicon with all the stuff they do for literally everything around the world, they're located in a bunch of communities around the across the country, um, and they help with things like following the Haiti earthquake. The organization has grown massively, and they just help with, you know, humanitarian effort, disasters, and all that other stuff. Seems like a really cool thing. I haven't looked into it, but if you do want to donate to them, you'll have to do, net, do that before the end of September, but you can get the Seeds of Hope emblem, this guy right here. Uh, and then other than that, if you have photo sensitivity issues, uh, they are working on some things, but you can check out a full kind of guide and description of what they've got going on in game right now. So they're going to continue to work on some things. They've got some other stuff going on. Check out that full guide. And then for player support, outside of the patch notes that I literally just read to you guys, uh, they give you a run through of how to start Season of Plunder. Basically, if you're going to start Season of Plunder and you haven't yet and you somehow see this video, make sure you have space in your consumables inventory. Make sure you have space in your quest item and bounty area. Uh, to pick up all the things and make sure you have space in your, like, just game inventory. If you have space in all those places, then as you go through the quest steps, it should be pretty straightforward. The main place I had issue was just I did not have space for a certain thing to drop. That's where I had my main issues. Um, other than that, the Twitch drop for watching the reveal should be out there. I got my emblem, so check yours and see if it's there. There are some known issues. Most of them seem to be cosmetic. I will say the one to point out, though... Storm Trance does not increase its damage over time while attacking, and that should be a thing. So definitely keep that in mind if you're running Warlocks. Um, Chaos Reach doesn't feel great, I hear, even with, like, Geomags. But, yeah, Chaos Reach without Geomags, I hear, is pretty bad. But Storm Trance is not doing its, like, building damage over time, which it should be. Dawn Chorus does not appear in Collections, so if you have one, don't delete it. Not saying you should, you would. Collections is usually a bad stat roll, but... Yeah, you're not going to be able to even pull one if you want to right now. The Xenology quest, which I assume is for Xenophage, isn't counting progress, so that might be an issue. Those are the three I noticed, but other than that, most everything else seems to be more cosmetic than anything. Um, Prime Gaming has a drop for some Darcy things, uh, ornaments. And then outside of that, you've got some movies and artists of the week. So that's most of what we got. Um... Season of the Plunder is pretty fun so far. It's been a pretty, pretty good time in it. I will get a lot more content coming to you guys, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, we have the podcast tonight. We've got KYT Kutcha. He's from Massive Breakdown, so really, really awesome podcast. Uh, we will be recording that tonight. Uh, that will be at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern, live on my YouTube channel, and then I'll post it up once I get the editing done, so you guys will see that probably tomorrow morning. We've got Zer and some other things going on, the usual stuff, but for now, if you guys are enjoying Season of Plunder and enjoying, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. Uh, if there's anything I forgot to mention, comment below, or if you just want to say hello, you can do that too. Uh, if you want to find me on Twitter or Twitch, uh, Twitch is usually Destiny Streams or Variety. Do a lot of variety over there. Right here on YouTube, though, it's a lot of Destiny with minimal variety. So if you enjoy it, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. If you guys are YouTube members or Patreon subs, thank you for that extra support. But you guys are all fantastic. See you soon.